It's been almost two years since the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 hit the market, and a lot of things have changed with both consoles, and just in general, gaming. Xbox has had a new lead replaced on Matrix, that's Bill Spencer, Final Fantasy VII is getting a remake, and The Last Guardian still exists. So you can see there's a lot of things that are happening with both consoles, so I thought it'd be awesome to revisit the old Xbox One vs PS4 two years later. Now let's take a look at the stats. PlayStation 4 has sold 22.4 million units worldwide, while well, Xbox One has sold 12.5 million units worldwide. Now a lot of people will say this is because the PS4 has had a larger reach in terms of a worldwide market, but that doesn't really explain the over 8 million units sold. It's probably more due to the fact that PS4 has better technical specifications than the Xbox One, allowing it to run multi-platform games better than the Xbox One usually. Now with that said, Xbox One has had a great turnaround since Phil Spencer took lead of the Xbox team. At launch, Xbox One didn't do so well and that was mostly just because of the confusion with the DRM features, the whole fact that they announced the console having DRM and then flipped it all the way upside down and completely reversed everything they had said before. Now I don't think it's really the fact that they announced that there were some DRM features on the Xbox One that turned people away, it was more or less the confusion between the different Microsoft employees that no one really said the exact same thing. Everyone had different answers for different questions. With that said, Don Matrix has left the company for worse things like being head of Zynga and then failing at that too, but now Phil Spencer is lead of Xbox and he's basically the shining beam of light of just general hope for the Xbox. He's completely turned around the image of the Xbox from this whole media console that's being hated by a bunch of gamers at launch to this shining just beaming of hope for gamers everywhere. So Phil Spencer's been doing a really great job just turning around the image of a media console back to the gamers console. Currently there's many different SKUs for both the PS4 and the Xbox One. In terms of the Xbox One you could purchase a $500 Xbox One that's a 500GB hard drive with Kinect and you could also buy a $400 Xbox One that's a terabyte model as well as it comes with Halo Master Chief Collection. Now the cheapest model currently is the $350 model that comes with a 500GB hard drive and also Halo the Master Chief Collection. On the PlayStation side, you can currently buy a PlayStation 4 500GB model for $400, and it comes with a copy of Bloodborne and The Last of Us Remastered Edition. Additionally, at the time of filming this video, Sony just announced the 1TB Ultimate Players Edition of the PS4. It comes with a 1TB hard drive, but it's only announced for Europe so far, and we don't know if it's coming to North America, and if it is, we don't know how much it costs yet. So. There's that. Now right from the beginning, Xbox One has always been advertised as the media console. If you want to consume your entertainment, may it be video streaming or music streaming or anything really, just streaming in general, Xbox One is the console to go to. And that's pretty much fact at this point. Xbox One just has a lot more options in terms of consuming media content than the PlayStation 4. And although the PlayStation 4 is slowly growing more and more in terms of media content, it's still outdone by the Xbox One. Now in terms of multi-platform games, which are third-party games coming to both Xbox One and PS4 and sometimes PC, these games usually tend to play on PS4 much better than they do on Xbox One, but that's excluding the PC of course. Right from the get-go, the PS4 just has always had the better technical aspects in terms of hardware, and because of that, you can usually see that frame rate and resolution on PS4 is much better than it is on Xbox One. Usually it's just a matter of differences between the resolution while sometimes a PS4 game will run at 1080p, the same version of the game will run at 900p on the Xbox One. And rightfully so as well, if a game runs at 900p on the PS4, it runs at 720p on the Xbox One usually. It's also because of this that I personally choose my PS4 as my multi-platform gaming console. Everything that comes out to PS4 and Xbox One, I buy it for PS4 just because it runs better. Now in terms of exclusives, I would say both consoles are pretty evenly matched right now. On the Xbox One side, you had games like Killer Instinct, Dead Rising 3, although that and Titanfall were both released on PC, but technically it was a console exclusive on Xbox One. And other games like the Halo Master Chief Collection, which was just a remaster of all four games for Halo on the Xbox One, which was great and other upcoming titles like Cupheads, which just looks amazing. A fantastic looking indie game that's coming to PC as well, but is coming exclusively in terms of consoles to the Xbox One. Now looking more into the future, Xbox One is getting a lot more games like Halo 5 Guardians, which is just the next installment in the Halo series, one that's surely gonna win the holiday season this year. Another game is Quantum Break that's coming out later next year that was sadly delayed from this year to next year, but looks like one of the most amazing games to look out for on the Xbox One. And of course, Gears of War 4, who was just announced recently at E3 this year. On the PlayStation side, we've had some pretty okay exclusives so far. 
Killzone Shadowfall wasn't the best playing game, it was the best looking game so far at launch, but not too amazing. Knack was an okay hitter, nothing amazing either, but we've had some pretty great titles like FMS Second Son, which proves to be one of my favorite current gen games in terms of exclusivity on any console. Bloodborne, although very challenging, was also a lot of fun, and then there was just the sad game that was really the Order 1886, which just was not that much of a great game. But looking onto the horizon of PlayStation 4, no pun intended, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, a brand new IP from Guerrilla Games that looks fantastic. We also have a lot more awesome new games coming to PS4, like Uncharted 4 from the Masterminds at Naughty Dog, Persona 5, which is technically not a PS4 exclusive, it is a PlayStation exclusive, but definitely one great JRPG that's coming to the PS4. We also have a reboot of the Ratchet and Clank series coming out next year, Until Dawn, which is sort of like a Quantic Dream game, but in the sense of a horror film, that's coming out this year. And finally, The Last Guardian, which is supposed to be coming out next year, but who knows, they've been delayed before, so presumably The Last Guardian will be out next year. And finally, we have Street Fighter V coming exclusively to the PS4 in terms of consoles, which is a great game that's gonna, you know, make a bunch of fighting gamers really happy on PS4. And then one of the most ambitious looking indie games, No Man's Sky, supposedly coming to PS4 this year. So in terms of exclusive, both consoles are pretty even so far, although in terms of the future, it looks like Xbox One is getting their exclusives faster than PlayStation 4 is, which is definitely going to see a big hit in the holiday season, where most likely Xbox One will win for having a bigger exclusivity line this holiday season. Now, PS4 and Xbox One share a lot of general online features that are just well known with any gaming console right now. For example, being able to play online with your friends, being able to chat with your friends, and just being able to stream right from your console to Twitch. With that said, there's a lot of online features that differentiate the Xbox One to the PS4. For example, Xbox One and just Xbox in general has always had the better online service in terms of multiplayer games. They just work better than PlayStation 4 has because the PlayStation Network just hasn't been as great as compared to the Xbox Live online infrastructure. Additionally, on Xbox One, gamers are able to stream their Xbox One games from their Xbox One console over to their Windows 10 PC over Wi-Fi. This is a brand new feature that's coming out later next month because of Windows 10. In response to that, PlayStation 4 owners are actually able to stream their PS4 games over to the PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation TV, and even a couple of Android phones and devices. From my own personal experience, Remote Play takes a better upper hand in this case because being able to stream my PS4 games to a little dedicated gaming handheld is really awesome, and it's like having my own personal Wii U gamepad for my PlayStation 4. Another cool feature that PlayStation 4 has over Xbox One is SharePlay, which allows your friends to connect online to your game locally and control your characters over streaming networks. So let's say if you're stuck on a really hard level and your friend across the country wants to help you out with that level, they can connect to your game online through streaming and play the level for you and help you out. The only caveat with this is that there's a time limit on this so you have to reconnect every time it times out. With that said, Xbox One absolutely destroys the PlayStation 4 in terms of backwards compatibility. Recently at this year's E3, Phil Spencer announced that the Xbox One will be able to play both physical and digital Xbox 360 games right from the get-go. You just plug in your disc, or put in your disc, I mean, and it just works. You could even just start downloading all your digital 360 games that you had on your Xbox Live Gamer Tag and just have them download straight to your Xbox One. This feature is available now for preview members, but it will be available for everyone this holiday season. In response to that, PlayStation 4 doesn't have direct backward compatibility, but it does have PlayStation Now, which really is just a sad feature compared to backwards compatibility on Xbox One. PlayStation Now allows you to stream previous PS4, PS3, PS1, and I believe in the future PS2 games over to your PS4 console through online streaming. It sounds cool in theory, but you do have to rebuy all your titles pretty much. So if you want to play a game that you already own physically on PS3, you will have to buy a rent subscription to this game on PlayStation Now in order to stream it over to your PS4. And what's worse about that is the fact that it's not being played locally, it's being streamed over to your PS4. So there's a lot of issues that can go wrong just trying to play it on your PS4. So in terms of backwards compatibility, Xbox One just dominates over the PS4. And it's without surprise seeing that the PS3 was on cell architecture while on PS4 it's more of a PC based architecture. So there's a big difference between those two consoles while on 360 and Xbox One, it's always been just really PC friendly. Now let's talk about the online reward systems. On Xbox One you have Xbox Live that gives you games with gold. You'll get two games usually for both your Xbox One and then your 360 
to play for free as long as you're an Xbox Live Gold member. Usually these titles will be retail titles, so you'll see games that are worth about $40 to $60 at retail price. Most recently one of the games I got was Rayman Legends, a really fun experience on Xbox One. And although currently you get about two games for Xbox One, you might be getting a total of four games in the future considering that Xbox One is soon going to get backwards compatibility, so you'll probably be able to play all your 360 games from games with gold on your Xbox One as well for a total of four games. On PS4 side, you have PlayStation Plus, a service very much like Xbox Live, but it gives you games with PlayStation Plus. In this case, you're usually getting two to three games for your PS4, and these are usually bite-sized indie titles, games that retail from around $15 to $30 compared to Microsoft's $40 to $60 titles. With that said, however, PlayStation Plus usually gives you two to three games per console, so if you have a PS3, a Vita, and a PS4, it's a much better value in terms of what you get in terms of games. And even better than that is the fact that usually the games you get for Vita or PS3 are usually cross-buy. So if you get two games for your PS4 and two other games for your Vita and they're different titles but they're still cross-buy, technically you're getting four different games for both your consoles. Ultimately, it's really your preference of types of games. So if you like to rather get games like Rayman Legends on your Xbox One, or you'd rather get games like Guacamelee and Don't Starve on your PS4, it's really up to you on what you decide is a better value for your buck. To wrap things up, the Xbox One and the PS4 are starting to hit that neck and neck series where the Xbox One and the PS4 are pretty much both really great consoles, whereas compared to the beginning of the year, it seemed like the PS4 was just generally just a much better console compared to the Xbox One. And although I still think the PS4 has the edge over the Xbox One, it's not by that much anymore. Xbox One is really catching up, especially with the help from Phil Spencer as the lead of Xbox. Ultimately, I have to give the lead to PS4 just because it does play multi-platform games much better than the Xbox One, and it does have the larger library of indie titles. With that said, however, Xbox One has a lot of great features that just work way better than they do on PS4. For example, backwards compatibility, the online infrastructure of Xbox Live, being able to change your gamer tag whenever you want, as well as just having a better holiday season lineup this year. There's without a doubt in my mind that Xbox One will definitely win this holiday season. But in the long run, in terms of just sales and just the better console, I can definitely see PS4 winning this console race. Overall, it's really up to you guys. Which console do you guys prefer? Would you rather have games like Uncharted 4 on your console, or would you rather have games like Halo 5 on your console? It's really user preference. So in the comment section below, let me know what you guys think is the better console. Please don't start a fight or anything, just tell me what do you guys think is the best console for you personally, why, is it because of the indie games, is it because of the better online, let me know in the comment section below. Now I know some of you guys might be upset that I didn't include the Wii U in this video, and that's because I'm planning to make a different video just specifically on the Wii U because it seems to be its own category of console right now. So if you want to see that video sooner, be sure to give the video a like and share it with your friends, it really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it, and it'll let me know just to work really extra hard to get that video out pretty soon. So thank you all very much for watching the video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.